Right. In which case, I would like us to start. So, um, without further ado, um, I will hand over to you, Graham. You can make the introductions. Fantastic. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, so, good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is the second in of of our series of 22 minutes with. And today we're gonna to be laying down the gauntlet to James Morgan, who will be introducing Field Effect. Um, just for your information, we'll, we'll, we'll be recording today's event. And for those of you who have a few minutes at the end, we will open up the floor to questions. Alternatively, you can raise questions in the chat. Um, after the event, we'll also be sending out a short survey and we will be grateful if that could be completed and returned to us at your convenience. Um, for those of you who have not worked with RS22 previously, uh, we provide, sorry, James, can you move the slide on? I think it's just on, on, on you to talk about this, Graham, before we go to the next bit. No problems. Okay, so for those of you who haven't worked with RS22 previously, uh, we're a cybersecurity reseller. We're based in the West Midlands, and we provide a number of security services, and we partner with emerging technologies, people like Field Effect, for instance. Uh, we pr pride ourselves on our 100% SLA rate, uh, which forms part of our ethos of putting humans before technologies. So essentially, we're here to work with companies and help them to close that security gap. We see a lot of companies uh, employing a lot of new technologies. They don't necessarily have the, the skills or the resource in-house to, to manage those. So we'll help to close those gaps. But also in doing so, we're looking to help companies to reduce their costs and helping them to do more with less. Um, so that's just a very quick overview of who we are as RS22. But in the essence of time, what I'd like to do is now hand over to James, who's going to present field effects. So James, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Um, welcome, everybody, this morning. I should just say we're, we are on an auspicious day. Today is both uh, the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. It is both a palindrome and an ambigram. Um, now, Oliver and Graham did ask me if whether we could do this at, at 2200 hours as well, so we could kind of keep the theme, uh, but we didn't really think it may have the level of attendance we wanted, asking organisations to, to join at, at 10pm uh, local time. So in the interest of kind of keeping it on there, we're going to 11 o'clock uh, rather than doing it at 2200 hours, but really appreciate everybody's attendance today. So as Graham said, um, field effect. Now, it's uh, a name I'm hoping that more people are starting to hear about. Uh, one of the fun and games about uh, of field effect in terms of launching into in the international market was that we launched during the first lockdown. Um, so the, the sort of um, events and promotional activities that we would typically have done uh, were somewhat constrained by, by the wonderful coronavirus. Anyway, so field effect. Really, we've, we've looked at how cybersecurity sits today and we've looked at how we can not necessarily fix, because I think there are a number of, of issues in relation to just trying to fix something. Instead, what we've looked to do is how we could reimagine the cybersecurity landscape for the interests of the, of the modern day clients. Um, organizations representing from those sort, of, those sort of smaller organizations in the SMB space through to larger enterprises. Typically, there is a commonality in relation to some of the challenges they have but it's a case of how we can address those sort of challenges in a way that is de-jargoned, so doesn't, under, doesn't really have a requirement to have PhD level, PhD level individuals within those organizations and presenting those sort of data points in a very easy to understand and easy to consume way. Now, manage detection and response, manage threat hunting and response, manage det extended detection and response, all of these are term terms that you may have come across. So I thought, it would be quite useful just to give a, a high level overview as to some of these sort of terms. It is a bit of a mouthful. Managed detection and response, extended detection and response, endpoint detection and response, all of these have a commonality in relation to, it is the outsourcing of your risk to a third party organization. You are empowering that organization to perform that service for you where you may not necessarily have either the skills internally, the resource internally, 
or you just want to, as I say, have that off of your plate. You've got enough to do without having to think about how we can, can do this straight, how you can redo this now. Now, for us, managed detection and response starts with visibility. Organizations, their environments, the levels of complexity that currently exist there is growing. And that's purely because organizations are looking at their environments and how they can now take advantage of cost optimization measures. Some of those may be in the cloud. Some of those may be looking at devices and how they can incorporate BYOD policies. Some of those may well be how we can close uh, the resourcing gap that we currently have. But where did, we, where did we come from with all of this? Now, fundamentally, we started with AV and a firewall. We were instructed, we were told that we needed to keep our preventative tooling at a sort of a certain level. And the analogy here is, as you say, we, we lock our doors when we leave in the morning. We make certain the windows are there. We do the obvious things. We do the, the sort of day-to-day -day common sense pieces. We stop our homes from being um, opportunistically taken advantage of by individuals who, who are out to, to really do, do harm. As we progressed though, more and more sort of areas came to our attention that the AV and the firewall didn't address. Our environments became more complicated purely because the attack surfaces that we needed to deal with themselves started to come to our attention. And what did we do? Invariably, we looked at these and we deployed more technology to solve this. We looked at how we could deal with Internet of Things. We looked at how we could deal with the network where we weren't necessarily able to deploy an endpoint agent, for instance, onto these sort of devices, a printer, for instance. We looked at how it is that we could get to grips with all these different sort of vulnerabilities that were present in these applications that we were leveraging to do our day-to-day -day business operations. We looked at then how we could re-architect our environments to better optimize. And invariably, this then became a bit of a mouthful, a bit of a problem. It didn't give us the outcome that actually we thought about. Different point solutions being put together, none of them really ever played nicely. You ended up having this sort of Frankenstein's monster of an approach when it came to security in our organizations. That itself came with huge amounts of cost. We needed to ensure that every individual component was licensed in the right sort of way, was purchased. We needed to depreciate assets. The costs just kept on adding up. And invariably, along with cost comes with complexity. None of these solutions were ever designed to play nicely with each other. They were point solutions to solve point problems. And the onus was always put on yourselves to deal with that sort of complexity, to create some sort of harmonious ecosystem where individual tools played nicely. And then once we kind of got to that sort of point, which in itself was, was quite a gargantuan challenge, we had to think about the ongoing maintenance of these. How do we make certain that if we have to take downtime on one, one solution or service, it doesn't impact downstream? How do we fit everything together so that when we perform updates, the output from these sort of tools is still in the same way. We may have invested in a SIEM platform, which aggregated all the sort of secondhand information that was output from these services and these devices, but it itself was reliant on you again to ensure that you were parsing the data in the right way, that it was in this sort of unified format. And invariably, it's like having 10 different people speaking 10 different languages in the same room and then you're sort of trying to understand what everything is being, what everything is saying. Quite a challenge in itself. And the final piece on this one was very much on the resourcing. So I've, I've then got all these sort of tools. I've created this sort of harmonious ecosystem. I've made certain that it's in alignment with any sort of, of a change control schedule, that everything works nicely. But now I've got to find the people to actually operate it. And in this sort of environment, these sort of individuals are not um, uh, a resource that is easy to come by. They are scarce and invariably they are greatly in demand. 
and for SMB organizations, for corporate mid-market organizations, even for quite a few enterprise organizations, retaining these individuals is a massive, massive challenge. They constantly get people phoning them up, offering them greater remuneration packages. And to then retain those individuals, it breaks compensation plans. So that all being said, and it does sound like I've kind of created a, a sort of like this, this, this worst case scenario here. What if we could reimagine things? What if we could actually take everything back to a point where we haven't deployed any technology? What is the outcome that we really want here? And I'd say that, that with those sort of preventative tools in place, what we're really trying to get to is a faster time to detect something inside the environment. And once that detection has taken place, a response that is timely and proportionate is then taken. Analogy here is if I give you a data point that doesn't have much context around it, you don't necessarily know what to do. I could say the building's on fire and leave it like that. Well, I, you don't know if that's somebody who's just sort of done a little bit of outside burning um, and it's slightly sort of spread, but it's easy to contain. Or if there is a raging inferno inside your premises, which is far more problematic. Without a sort of context, it's very difficult to ascertain what the action that I should do. Now, that reimagining piece, for us, it starts, as I said, with visibility. When we're doing managed detection and response, we need to be able to see the environment so that we can then understand what's going on and perform those sort of detections. And it starts with the endpoint. Where we want to be viewing this is an holistic approach. There should be somewhere we can go to that gives us that visibility of our environment in a single place. We should be able to understand what's happening in there and be protected via this single pane of glass. In some ways, it's what Seam originally was intended to, well, was trying to be, but invariably it, it kind of got lost along the way. Now, for us, as you say, the endpoint is the truest form of, of, of that data point. It's where we want to start. And we want to sort of then look at how we can complement that. So where we aren't able to deploy endpoint technology, well, the next layer up would be the network. Again, we want to get that sort of visibility. And the final then piece of this is, right, well, as our environments are taking advantage of cloud, and, of cloud, we want to get the visibility in that sort of area as well. We want to look at things holistically. Now, invariably, this then starts to create its own challenge if we're looking at a tooling alone approach in that suddenly we've got loads of signals and telemetry information across all these verticals, across all these sort of areas. And how are we going to be presenting it in such a way that doesn't then overwhelm our organizations? And this then is where we take on a layer of service. Looking at the environment, as I say, holistically, We've got our endpoints, we've got our network, and we've got cloud. It isn't though just a case of deploying tooling. Tooling is a great way to support the work that the humans do. And the humans um, from a field effect perspective are ones where our knowledge and expertise has been kind of born out of, of the government experience that we have. Field effect itself as an organization was founded by individuals who are working with the five eyes, who are working with governments, who are working with three letter agencies. The individuals that we have here understand what good and bad looks like, understand most importantly, areas in the gray. Their backgrounds are typically defending against nation states, which one would argue in, in today's climate is, is, has never been greater. These sort of individuals understand good and bad, understand the gray, and most importantly, are able to apply their experience to then showcasing these data points to our clients. Now, we're doing that in such a way that then simplifies things. It's not good for an SMB organization if the output they get from a service is full of jargon, is full of complex sort of terms that they may not know what to do and how to consume them. So for us, it's key that we need to see this and deliver these sort of data points, these sort of detections 
to our clients, but in a meaningful way. And then further to that, if they empower us to do something about it, that we can take a response action on their behalf. Again, it's managed detection and response. And that response action may be a case of we're seeing something happening inside the environment that means that we need to revoke someone's credentials. It may mean that we need to then take an action whereby we isolate a workstation or we isolate a server. It may well be that we actually see something that ransomware is, is trying to do something. We're seeing our endpoint and it's saying, well, hang on a second, I've got this executable here. I've got this program that's trying to do something that's actually, it's never really ever going to be a good thing. So for that sort of response, it may well be that we need to actually terminate the process. Again, there isn't a one size fits all here. It's all around servicing that client outcome, that faster mean time to detection and that faster mean time to response. And doing it in such a way that it doesn't overwhelm our clients with data. Fundamentally, this, is, this becomes a big data problem. And it's one how we need to make certain that we aren't delivering these sort of data points so that, yes, it's useful information, but there's too much of it. I'm giving you the needle, but it's no longer the needle in the haystack. It's the needle in the needle stack. I'm, I've just given you too much information. Now, for us, this starts with, as I said, the endpoint. How we deliver our service is that we deploy that endpoint agent, which sits um, on that endpoint. It's agnostic in terms of the operating system. Doesn't matter if it's a Windows box, if it's Linux, if it's Mac OS, we're working cross platform. We're complementing that by understanding everything that's going on inside the environment on the wire within the network. And the third leg on all of this is within the cloud. Again, there are a variety of different mechanisms on which you can get visibility in, that, in those cloud environments. And for us, again, it's understanding what it is the client is looking to achieve, how best we can deliver that through the monitoring and through the, the service that we deliver to our clients. And when we've got those sort of data points there, delivering them in an actionable way so that we become an extension of our clients and their security stack. We become that sort of partner for your organizations. Now, conscious I've, I've, I've whizzed through that um, in, a, in a very, very short period of time, primarily as, as again, wants to leave some time through for questions, wants to leave some time here to just to go through um, and answer any sort of, of areas of interest. Um, but Graham, if I can pass across to you, um, and we can, we can then open up the floor for, for further conversations and questions. Thanks, James. Um, there was one question posted earlier on in the chat saying they looked at a unified approach, um, but they'd had a lot of trouble managing the information that was coming through, and they were asking how Field Effect does that differently. And I think you've touched on that with the, the human factor, which ties into to RS22, but did you just want to quickly recap on how important that is to, to people that, you know, field effect work with? Absolutely. So when people have typically tried to do this before and they've either leveraged um, tooling themselves and built out that sort of stack, or they've engaged with say an MSSP or an outsource provider, typically the feedback that we have is that the, the, the approach is too noisy. They're getting too much information back through and they're not experienced enough to know what they should be doing, where they should be focusing on. So for us, again, this is where the human layer comes in. And this is of absolute utmost importance. Tooling itself can get us a certain way. And then you can have elements of that tooling that, for instance, leverage artificial intelligence, leverage machine learning. Fundamentally, it's, it's scripts that are run in order to then uh, bring out more relevant data points. Now, it's that information that then needs to be better understood by an analyst. And then the analyst make the determination based on their experience as to whether this is something that the client needs to be aware of, whether this is something that they need to take an action on on their client's behalf, et cetera. It may well be that there's a load of activity happening in terms of what I would term the background noise and background radiation. You don't need to know if somebody is, quote unquote, knocking at your front door if they're unable to get in. 
However, if they do get in, if they start to then do things, absolutely, you need to be aware of that. And you need to be aware of the actions that need to be taken. Again, thinking about this in terms of layers from a building perspective, let's say they've got through the first set of doors, but then they're in the turnstile and they still need that pass to get through. Well, in that instance, it may well be that the security guard comes up to them and says, I'm sorry, sir, you should, you should be going, you shouldn't be here. That would be an effect of a, a potential revoking of credentials because they can see somebody coming in via that sort of door pass, but they don't recognize their actual face. It's like, well, hang on a second. You've leveraged Tom's pass to get in. You're not Tom. Um, thank you and goodbye, sir. But it needs to be done again. These sort of data points need to be given to client organizations that, that, are, that aren't replete with jargon. If I say, okay, you're using SMB V1 inside your organization, that's a big problem. And it's an organization of say 50, organ 50 to 100 individuals. They may have one IT specialist who understands that and that individual is, is away on holiday. Then the individual they've asked to, to take ownership of this, they don't understand what that means. SMB V1, is that good? Is, is one the best? If they give it to them in such a way as that they don't really understand and there's no mechanism by which they can communicate or speak to their provider beyond just an automated help desk or just emails, it isn't helpful for them. It has to be that sort of partnership. Hope that that answered your question. If it, if it, if it didn't, please again, um, jump in. I, I love for these sessions to be as interactive as possible. Fantastic. Thanks for that, James. Um, okay, we've got no other questions posted here today, but what we will do, as I said, we will follow up with a survey um, and we'll also provide a link to the recording of this webinar. But if anybody has any further questions, please, please drop us a line and we'll be happy to, to get back to you on those. And with that, I thank James for his time today and we'll close out the session. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.